What is going on, everybody? This is World's Finest, brought to you by the Comic Collectors Guild. Uh, with you, my name is Jake. You guys know me as the Superman, recording from the Fortress of Solitude, and coming from the Batcave is Batman himself, a.k.a. Lee Lawson. Lee, how's it going, buddy? It's going great. Gotham City is safe, so I'm taking some time to sit down and have a conversation with my man. How you there doing, you bro? go. I'm good. Thank you so much. Welcome to World's Finest. This is a new vidcast that uh, we're going to be doing, and we're so excited uh, to be doing this for the Comic Collectors Guild. Uh, we're going to be bringing to you guys so much content uh, over the next weeks, months, years, and uh, wanted to give you a little information about kind of what we're going to be covering here on World's Finest. Uh, so, Lee, why don't you give the audience a little breakdown of uh, what's to come? Well, certainly. This is going to be your safe place of all things geekdom, guys. <laughs> safe haven here. Uh, we're going to talk about really everything in pop culture. Uh, that has to do with superheroes, comic books, uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, whatever it might be, guys. This is what we're going to talk about. Uh, every uh, current events, top 10 lists, uh, really just sharing our opinions on different things and views from the comic book world. And we're really excited to be doing it. Yeah, uh, this is something that me and Lee, you know, off camera have talked about so many times. And we said, you know, why don't we just do this, you know, on camera and share our, you know, opinions and you know, what's great about, you know, all of this and geek culture, whether it's, you know, Star Wars or DC Comics or Marvel or whatever, it's all subjective. So everybody has like their own points and opinions and it's just fun to hear. So uh, again, this is a safe place, which I'm glad, you know, you mentioned where, you know, you're not going to get hate for any opinions and uh, we're going to cover, you know, things of all over the scale. So uh, we cannot wait to bring it to you. And we thought there'd be no better way uh, to kick this thing off with the age old question, the Justice League taking on the Avengers, or the Avengers taking on the Justice League. Uh, right. We got the, the heavy hitters from the DC universe, from the Marvel universe, um, you know, in the comic books. And, you know, it's always been a question of who would win between these two epic teams. Um, and we're gonna go over it. So uh, these guys have crossed over a little bit before in the comics, and Lee, I know you have, you know, read some of these storylines. So why don't you give a, a quick history background as far as in the comics when they did crossover and how that went? Sure. And I think it's worth saying now too, because this really is in the forefront of our, uh, well, well, as Jake said, it's in the forefront of everyone's mind, right? If you're a right. comic book fan, superhero fan, it's always been fun to say who will win between this person, this DC hero versus that Marvel hero. You know, it's just always been a fun uh, thing to have a discussion with your friends and all. But right now, it's really in the forefront of conversation uh, because, as you guys know, with everything that's going on right now, the comic book world, or really the world, has been shut down. And one of the things that's affected by that is, you know, shipment of comic books. Um, they've always had a uh, past few years, you've heard trouble with sales anyway. A lot of people are just reading them digitally using DC Universe or the Marvel app to be able to just kind of pay 10 bucks a month and then have a, a litany of comics for you to read throughout the years. Um, so what, and especially now with the shutdown, people are even more worried that this might not, it might not ever come back and, and, and claim their rightful place in the world. So uh, a lot of the comic book editors, artists, writers, and things like that from DC and Marvel have been tweeting uh, back and forth and saying, no other way, uh, what better way to really kick off when sales go back into play, when s comics are being shipped, and to really uh, put a fire underneath sales for comics would be to do a Justice League versus Avengers or just a DC versus Marvel. And to your point, Jake, there have been some throughout the years. And, and if you guys haven't read them, uh, they are awesome, awesome books to read uh they've actually been quite a few uh more than than some people might be aware of there's been one-offs and things like that but a few notable ones that i will go through right now was the one that really kicked it off in the 1970s was superman versus spider-man um which was like a giant sized issue not just a regular sized comic but it was like this one of those bigger bigger things that right. you can buy it was a big event um and that was followed quickly by batman and the incredible hulk um, so those were really in the 70s. In the 80s, there's one that's really notable for is the uh, X-Men versus Teen Titans. 
Teen Titans, at, at that time, those are the two number one sellers for both DC and Marvel. Which Teen is crazy. Titans, it is, right? Believe it or not, New Teen Titans was outselling uh, Batman. And Batman's usually been always the number one when it comes to DC. Right. But at that period of time, New Teen Titans was outselling them uh, by a wide margin. And on Marvel, uh, side you had x-men so they took these two uh you know teams and basically had them meet up um which was cool about this one is a lot of the times in other events it's always been like a dc and marvel universe are separate you know and they're right. and then they're like oh we're, we're, what are we doing here this is a weird right. universe and things like that um these teen titans versus x-men was notable because they actually existed in the same world you know it was like they kind yeah, of yeah. knew who they were so it was it's kind of like they Teen Titans were operating over here, X Men were operating over here, but they were they were uh, already aware of each other. That's um, cool. Followed quickly, it is pretty cool. You know, I, I like the way they did that. So it yeah. takes away all of the like, who are you, and all of that. It just right. kind of gets right down to commission. Um, then in DC versus Marvel, or back in, in 1996, they did a DC versus Marvel, uh, which was basically what was really notable about this one is they actually, there was some fights that were already pre-decided that the editorial editors just kind of did on their own, but there was a few battles out there where they actually let the audience decide who would win. So it was uh, done by voting and, and things like that. Uh, there wasn't a lot of internet, so I think these were phone calls and, uh, and, and write-ins, yeah. but um, it was kind of cool to see exactly who the audience was going to let when uh what fight so that was really cool and then the last one that they really did and of course guys there's been other ones like i said but these are the notable ones throughout the years um the, the last one that they've done though was justice league versus avengers in in dc versus marvel and what was cool about that one is i mean it was really cool because that was another one where they were like coming from the different universes right not knowing each other, but this one made a commentary on just the differences, the stark contrast of how Marvel heroes are treated and DC heroes are treated. Right. You know, DC heroes are viewed as gods. So they went over to the DC heroes, went over to the Marvel universe, and they were like, why are they letting their world go to hell like this? You know what I mean? Right. They just are like, they don't view them as or not they don't like their they don't worship these guys like, yeah. yeah well well it, it, i don't want to say they were like that you know what i mean yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but they were I'll like say, you know they're not on a higher standard you yeah know? you know what, what's up they, they, so, yeah they were very confused by that and then avengers of course or marvel universe was like these guys gosh they got it great you know what i mean these right, guys yeah. they're, they're loving it um over here so that was just you know it was just they kind of no made notices and, and commentary on the differences within the universe and you know the different cities and stuff like that because of course dc is made up with metropolis all these right. gotham city all these uh made up made up kind of towns or right cities. uh but that was a really good one too um uh, and so that was really the last one they've done so i do i agree jake i think that if they actually a way to really kick off the comic book world again and to, and to light a fire under the sails would really be to do a crossover like that again yeah i mean i i can't think of uh if you're going to kick things off and want to light a fire that's pretty much in my opinion the biggest fire you can light i mean exactly. i don't know i don't know how you, how you top that so um we're going to be giving our opinions on who would win this epic battle Yes. Uh, we have already kind of pre predetermined eight characters uh, from Justice League, eight characters from the Avengers. Uh, we've already got some matchups on characters we think would match up the best against one another and line up a little bit based off like backstory and, and powers and things like that. So we're going to go through them one by one, see who comes out victorious. Uh, for the Justice League, uh, we have Superman, Batman, <laughs> Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, and Martian Manhunter. Woo. So we got a big eight. That's a big oh, eight. Man. For the Avengers, we got the Hulk, Thor, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Iron Man, and Doctor Strange. So they're coming heavy too. I love it. I love it. So This should be I, fun. This is going to be fun. Absolutely. It's going to be very fun. So we're going to start – with you know you always got to bring your your big gun out first so yeah. we got big blue taking on big green that is superman taking on the incredible hulk lee who is winning this one soups or the hulk wow strength wise these guys are obviously the, the best there is in each of their own universes right hulk has always been like that as the strongest there is and of course well superman is is definitely that in the dc universe um, strength for strength, you know, uh, uh, just blow for blow. 
It's pretty even there. But unfortunately for the Hulk, Superman has another litany of powers that he does not have uh, with, the, with the capability of flight and the heat vision and all of that. Um, I, you know, I just think, I hate to say it, but the Jolly Green Giant goes down on this one. Yeah, just uh, really no way for him to overcome. It's going to be a, a hell of a battle. Yeah, I feel bad for wherever they are because the destruction is going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, but for the yeah. surroundings, but Superman takes it. Yep, and uh, not to be biased based off of my uh, Fortress of Solitude behind me, but I think for the same reasons, uh, if it comes to you know fist to fist and punching, I think Superman would probably be even caught off guard at first of just how strong Hulk is and would be able to you know stand toe to toe. Obviously the the anger he gets, the stronger he gets. But uh, I don't know what kind of raging pill he'd have to take to be able to get strong <laughs> enough to take on, uh, you know, Superman. Uh, eventually, the between the heat vision and the cold frost breath and the super speed and all those other things, he could literally just pick Hulk up and move him to another planet. So um, Hulk yeah. could, you know, hold it up for a little bit, but but Superman comes out on top. So the Justice League has a 1-0 advantage over the Avengers. Superman has won his matchup. And now we're going to flip it over to the Batcave and uh, bring up the other side of World's Finest, and that is Batman against Captain America. So we got two very strategic leaders in their respective ways, the epitome of human perfection on both ends of the spectrum. So who do you have, Cap or Bat? Oh, man, for this one, it, this is really evenly matched. And I'm yes. saying this as uh, from the perspective of the Batman here. Uh, <laughs> this was very evenly matched. Uh, they're, they're very strategic, as you said. They're, they're planning. They're trying to outwit the other one. I mean, I think this one goes on for actually hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the other one oh, just yeah. kind of goes blow for blow. Uh, some of the other battles, this one goes on for hours. Uh, I mean, like you said, Captain America is a super soldier. He's the uh, uh, most a physical, you know, specimen, uh, as best you can be. Um, it comes up from a bottle. Batman has trained his whole life, though, you know, to, to get to that level. Um, I think after a few hours, Cap goes down. I think Batman finally, I think he takes it. Again, neither one of these two fights we've talked about so far is, is, is a blowout. I think these are really big battles, Superman and, and the Hulk. Um, and then Batman versus Captain America. I've got to go with Batman. He takes it. He takes Captain America out. Same. I think, you know, the shield will definitely help Cap, you know, for a while. But the the IQ level of Batman and the different plethoras of martial arts that he knows compared to just Cap's pretty much brute, you know, more hand-to-hand combat skills, I think eventually will win out for Batman uh, between all the gadgets and, and all that. I think that uh, Bats would be able to pull it out. So, I have Batman as well moving on. So we have a 2-0 lead for the Justice League. And, um, you know, Batman and Superman, I mean, there's nothing to to cry about that one. They're the big two. So they're moving on. So we're going to move to a little bit of a different kind of matchup here on this next one. Uh, We're going to take this one into space with some space cops. We got uh, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, taking on old Carol Danvers and Captain Marvel. Uh, So we got two space cops. Um, you know, very similar backstories with those two. Who do you have winning between Lantern and Captain Marvel? Whew. For this one, I believe, and Hal, Hal's pretty, you know, and we're talking about the Hal Jordan Green Lantern, one of the best yes. there is. I do love the matchup, to your point, space cops from their respective universes, and they're very similar backgrounds. Both pilots, both in the military of some sort, you know, Hal, well, Hal being a test pilot, Carol being in the military pilot. Um, I'm going to go, Marvel fans be happy, <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Captain Marvel on this one. I believe she takes Hal out. And I honestly don't think this one is a, uh, you know, the other ones have been pretty evenly matched, I think. And again, Hal is a badass, but I think Carol takes him out. I really do. And, and I don't think this one goes on for hours. I think there's a couple good, I think Green Lantern gets a couple good blows in. But to me, this one is more of not such an even match. I think uh, I think she definitely takes them out, and and we got to win for Marvel on my side here. Yep, uh, I concur with that. I think that Captain Marvel, just on a power scale, is just a couple levels above what Green Lantern is. I love Hal Jordan. I love the Green Lantern, you know, character, uh, but she's just got so many more powers that that he doesn't. Um, so I think just strength wise, she's going to be able to to take him out. So yeah. again, Marvel on the board. We got a two one advantage for the Justice League, but it's. Get a little closer, two to one. 
Uh, moving on to another one, we have uh, the king of Atlantis, and that is Aquaman taking on Logan, a.k.a. Wolverine. We got the Trident taking on the Antimantium Claws. Who is winning that matchup, Aquaman versus Wolverine? Well, first, guys, I want to say that I'm finally happy that at least into the public, you know, we've always known as comic book fans, Aquaman's been a badass. Oh, yeah. he, he always has been. Unfortunately, one of the more popular cartoons for a lot of people that were growing up was the Super Friends. And they didn't portray the King of Atlantis in the most positive light. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, the general public, that's what their perception of him was. You know what I mean? It's just somebody who rode dolphins like water skis and and just, you know, uh, was just a fish uh, boy. <laughs> yeah, a fish, a fish, fish guy. You know, you could, and he could talk to fish. What's so cool about that? <laughs> He's the king of Atlantis, as I said. I mean, he is strong, very strong. I mean, you know, I mean, I would say strength level. He's one of the second tier. I mean, we've got Superman up there and Wonder Woman, of course, those guys, Captain Marvel. But he's right under there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he's just pretty, pretty, pretty invulnerable as well. And, uh, again, just an all-around badass. Anytime you cast Jason Momoa, which I'm glad that the public yeah. perception of him is changing because you don't see – you don't look at uh, Jason Momoa and think this guy is just somebody who talks to fish. Oh, yeah. And rides Definitely off not. the water ski. Definitely you know? not. So, again, I'm hoping we've established Aquaman is a badass. That being said, we all know, we all know Wolverine. Uh, like I said, the Adamantium Claws, uh, the healing factor that he has. So, I mean, Aquaman's going to get a couple good blows, a couple great blows, but Logan keeps getting back up. You know what I yep. mean? He keeps getting back up. Right. So I do think in this particular match here that Wolverine takes Arthur Curry out. Yep. I mean, I concur with that. I love Aquaman. I think, you know, I'm so happy as well and refreshing that he's getting his light on who he truly is, is that yeah. he's a king. He's a warrior. He's, you know, a complete badass. and He is super strong. Um, but in this match, I got to go with Logan. You know, he's my favorite Marvel character. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the healing factor is what does it for me. I mean, he is one little wrecking ball of, of, of rage and, and he's just going to keep on coming. And eventually that is going to be able to take Aquaman out. And I have Wolverine winning, which squares this matchup up two to two. Oh and, yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're only got a couple left, so we'll, we're going to see who comes out on top. <laughs> Moving on. We have, I think possibly the most epic, evenly matched matchups in this entire uh, fight, and that is Wonder Woman against Thor. So we have God versus God. This one is super tough. For me, it's the toughest between, you know, of all the matchups. So we got Diana Prince taking on Thor. Who do you have winning this one? To your point, I love this as well, the North Norse mythology versus the Greek mythology, you know, the son of Odin versus the daughter of Zeus. Uh, <laughs> I think this one is, is a fantastic matchup. Uh, they are both gods. They are both have weapons, you know, mystical weapons. She's got her sword, shield, and a lasso, actually. And yeah. bracelets. I mean, she's and got a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah the gauntlets. So she has a lot. And of course, Thor has me on her. Uh, but I think, man, it is tough. I mean, we've seen Super. We've seen Wonder Woman take a couple of good blows, you know, in the movies and things like that, uh, from Superman. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to go with the Princess of Themyscira. Uh, I'm going to go with Wonder Woman on this one. I think she takes it, man. I do. I think that she uh, is able to uh, withstand a couple of those blows from the honor you know with the gauntlets and like I said the shield she's got a lot she's got a lot but even strength wise I mean she's right there with Thor you know she yeah. really is in my opinion and I do believe that it, this is a great battle as well um but she takes him she takes him down uh again we're on the same page I concur um 100 this one's so close it could literally go either way I mean if we're just talking 100 percent, I'm like 51 49 in favor of Wonder Woman the deciding factor for me is you know one of Thor obviously is big Power moves as he's the god of thunder, the lightning strikes, and that kind of plays into Wonder Woman's hands. We've seen her take lightning before, kind of put her right in her gauntlets and fire right back at people. Uh, we, how we've seen her ride lightning, you know, before yeah. in the comics. So uh, Wonder Woman, because of that, I think she would be able to take it out. But this would be a very, very, very long battle and uh, could easily go either way. But Wonder Woman squeaks it out and the justice league also takes a, a small advantage with a three, two lead uh, going into oh. the next matchup. Yeah. And this is uh, going to be probably the most entertaining 
as far as commentary uh, in battles, and that is the Flash taking on Spider-Man. Um, I don't know about you, but I would just love to hear the conversation between uh, old Barry <laughs> Allen and uh, Peter Parker. Uh, but uh, we got Flash and Spidey. Who is winning this one? Oh, man. To your point, if it was just that, the banter alone, you know what I mean? Oh, it'd be it great. It'd be freaking awesome. That would be great commentary to, to, to listen to, or to be a fly on the wall, uh, to listen to. Um, uh, wow. Guys, for those who have listened to us, you guys know that both Jake and I are, are huge DC fans, by the way. Um, we're Marvel fans also. A point of saying this is, my preface of this is by saying Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel character. He really is. Um, He's got this spider sense. He's very agile. He's quick, but nowhere near as quick as Flash. Obviously, yeah. he's got his name Flash, Speed of Light. You know, I do think that there's a couple blows that in the very beginning that Spidey Duck was able to uh, outmaneuver uh, due yeah. to the spider sense and the, the fact that he's very agile. But like again, not as quick or fast as Flash. <sighs> Taking all things into effect or into account, I think Barry Allen comes out on top of this one. I think he really does. I think he takes Spidey out, um, you know, uh, and I don't even know how long, I, I think there's a couple blows that he misses, you know, the very beginning due to the spider sense, as I said, but I don't even know if this is a really, really long matchup. I, I, you know, yeah. I love the other ones have been really coming down to the wire. It's like oh, fighting for hours. This one doesn't take that long. Yeah. Awesome. No, I'm with you too. I think that, you know, to your point, the spider sense can help a little bit with Spider-Man reflecting Flash, but like web shooters will do nothing towards Barry because he's going to just be way too fast to even have it even sniff him. So uh, I have Flash taking him out. Uh, I love Spider Man. Uh, again, he's one of my favorites as well, but he, he just can't hang with Flash. This one is over fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, and um, the banter makes it great, though. The banter it does. makes it great. It so. does. And, and uh, that's why I wanted to last longer to hear more of the banter, to be honest. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but, you know, we've got a little lead here, a little cushion. It's 4-2 for the Justice League. Um, right. We have a couple more, two more. We have Cyborg against Iron Man. So we're going with a lot of uh, technology, a lot of, you know, genius IQ, you know, similar kind of iron steel frame, you know. Yeah. Cyborg by the mother box, Iron Man with his toys and suits. So do we have Tony Stark or do we have Cyborg coming out on this one? You know, man, to me, I actually think that Cyborg takes him. <laughs> I really do. I mean, the way he's got – now, Tony is definitely obviously very, you know, um, with it, with the technology. technology yeah. um, but Cyborg, it's part of him. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is part of him. I mean, the fact that he's been able to just, to just quickly use his whatever, you know, mother yeah. circuitry or whatever to just right. take over these type of things. And I think that's what he does with Tony's armor. Yeah. You know? I think Tony probably, um, while while Vic is, 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 you know, figuring it out internally and, and, and taking over the armor, I think Iron Man's definitely getting some good shots in, you know? Yeah. I mm -hmm. think at, at the end of the day, I see Cyborg taking him out. I know this one's probably going to cause a lot of mayhem, uh, but but to me, that's what happens. I really do think. I I actually agree with you. I mean, to your point, uh, Iron Man has a lot of weapons, where Cyborg kind of is the weapon. Uh, yeah. And to me, perfect. Way um, to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a part of him. And the big thing too is because of his ability, and he's basically a, a walking artificial like computer almost. You know. He could probably hack into Jarvis and get into the suit and just kind of take it over. You know, yeah. I think that's where he could have the edge. Uh, if it was just like no use of technology, Iron Man might win that. Uh, but because he has that aspect, he could, you know, hack into Tony's suit. And I think uh, Victor Stone uh, pulls it out for the Justice League in this one. And uh, Cyborg takes out Iron Man, uh, mm -hmm. which brings us to our last battle. And uh, man, this one's tough. We got Martian Manhunter against Doctor Strange, um, the, you know, the, the master yeah. of the mythical arts against the last son of Mars. Who wins this one? This one is going to be difficult. It is very difficult. Because my, my first instinct is to say John Jones. Yeah. But 
because of, you know, just because who he is. He doesn't get yeah. a lot of respect, I think, outside of no. the pop culture world or outside of, you know, the comic book world. People who just don't know him, people who read and have known and grown up with him, we know who he is, right? He's right there with right. Superman. You know, I mentioned yeah. earlier this kind of A-list, not A-list, but the, the A-list of strength-wise. The, the power levels, powerful. yeah. Yeah, power level. Um, that, you know, I, said, I mentioned Superman. I mentioned uh, Shazam and Wonder Woman. And right, you know, kept, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Martian Manhunter, John Jones, he's, he's right there with him. Oh, yeah. Right there with him on a, now, like a five power scale he's a five like he's, uh, yeah for or, sure. or he or he's at least like a 4.8 like he's right yeah there. and he brings a lot up more to the game also outside of just strength you know what i mean he does he has a lot more powers outside of superman you know the mm -hmm. invisibility uh being able to be intangible you know go through things be a, a shapeshifter all of that though does not hang with the mystic of arts um uh Doctor strange i really do think um martian manhunter is one of his uh vulnerabilities is fire yeah so really all dr strange has to do is create some type of spell or fire spell or whatever it might be and he takes them out i think yep. all those other things just go by the wayside all of the other power levels and powers that um he has goes away because i think dr strange stephen strange emerges as the victor on this one. i we have a clean sweep on being on the same page i have dr strange too and that pains me to say it because yeah. martian manhunter is to me the most undervalued superhero uh for dc i mean as you mentioned he's so overpowered uh he's a very cool character i mean just the concept he's from mars uh the different things he can do but dr strange is just knowledge of the my mystical arts uh keeper of the time stone all of that i think he's got enough to be able to take martian manhunter out um and will utilize the weakness of fire against martian manhunter um and i had dr strange winning so another win for the Avengers, but it is not enough because that is it in the Justice League has a 5-3 victory over the Avengers. Um, and this could go either way. I mean, there's so many more characters we could throw into this. Uh, so many more matchups I would love to see. But as far as the big eight, I think this would be the most realistic matchups. And I'm not surprised. I would think as a whole, the Justice League as a whole would be uh, Avengers, in my personal opinion, I think part of that is because of the way they are written. Whereas, to your point, the the DC is their gods. You know, they're yeah. they're meant to be more powerful. Whereas Avengers is real world. It's New York City. It's you know, a kid in high school. It's you know, um, you know, these normal human beings that just take up these roles. Well, yeah. it's meant to be that way. But I have the Justice League taking out the Avengers. Um, I'm sure you feel the same, or do you feel like, as a whole, the Avengers could actually uh, beat the Justice League, or would beat the Justice League? No, I do. I agree with you, uh, because, as you just said, uh, you know, insinuated, DC is more of a powerhouse. They are viewed as gods. While, if you notice, we, we really chose the seven top tier, you know what I mean, that most people are known for in these battles. And most of the higher tier, top tiered, Marvel characters are more street level yeah. type of type of uh, heroes, you know, like Spider Man and Wolverine, even uh, Captain America. You know what I mean? These guys are badasses. Don't get me wrong, but they're more street level. They're not really out there fighting cosmic threats. I mean, they have. There's definitely a, a litany of stories where that happens, but for the most part, they're more grounded. Right. You know, so they just really. I mean, they're. You and I would love their powers, of course, but eh. oh yeah, <laughs> most of the people. I mean, don't get me wrong; they're viewed, they're 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 awesomely powered, but they don't don't really stand uh, toe to toe. A lot of them don't. You know, there's some exceptions, of course. We got Thor, you got the Hulk, but uh, but for the most part, it's it's more of a grounded grounded uh, level. Yeah, there. I'm them. with you 100. percent So we got DC winning, but most importantly, what do you guys think? Who is going to win this epic clash of the titans? The Justice League versus the Avengers. Let us know your comments, what your thoughts are. If there's any other matchups you would like me and Lee to go over and let you know our thoughts on who we think would come victorious in an epic matchup, um, we'd love to hear your opinion. So hit that subscribe button and check out the website, www.comiccollectorsguild.com. Show us your collection, whether it's comics, Funko Pops, statues, whatever it might be. If you just want to talk geek culture, we'd love to do it with you. So uh, www.comiccollectorsguild.com. Uh, if you have any suggestions on topics you'd like me and Lee to cover, um, please let us know. We'll be happy to take any suggestions, uh, and we'd love to talk about it. Uh, so uh, we have so much more coming. Uh, we appreciate you coming in with our inaugural episode here of World's Finest, and we're going to be coming to you 
a whole lot here over the next couple of weeks. So, uh, Lee, thank you so much for taking time uh, out of your uh, beating the pulp out of people in Gotham City uh, and, and from your back cave. And uh, I appreciate it, man. It's been fun breaking down this epic matchup with you. I agree, man. It's always a good time. All right, guys. Until next time, stay hunting, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.